Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1618. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm revved up and very excited to share with you today a guest who's calling in from York, across the pond, as we say here in the U.S. in the United Kingdom, Tom Maxwell. Hey, Tom, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I'm ready, Mark. Yeah, let's do it. Well, in the vehicles that you guys build, they are twisted automotive. It is going to be a fun ride today, and you listeners are going to learn more about that in a minute. But before we go into a proper introduction for you, Tom, what's one thing you could share with us that maybe most people don't know about you? Most people don't know about me. Uh, I have uh, I have a degree that doesn't relate to anything to do with automotive. And what's that? Uh, I have a degree in creative writing. So oh, for, cool. for a long time, I wanted to be a writer. I'm a big, big fan of films. So uh-huh. uh, I yeah. had a vision where I was going to write screenplays. Um, funny how things change. But yeah, <laughs> that's probably one thing a lot of people don't know about me. Well, you know, it's not a bad talent to have because writing is a, a really a skill that has to be worked on and gleaned and honed. My son loves to write. He's an avid reader. I mean, he reads as many books as my wife does. And uh, when he writes me things, I am always like, wow, this is pretty cool. I think more people should learn to be better writers, especially in this day age of uh, quick messages on uh, tweets and text messages and things like that. A nice skill to Mm -hmm. have. So there you go. Well, let me give you a proper introduction before we jump into some questions here. Tom Maxwell is the managing partner and CEO of Twisted Automotive North America. Twisted creates all new vehicles born from the timeless Land Rover Defender, featuring an LT1, LT2, V8, or an all-electric motor. Their builds include contemporary technology, luxurious features, exclusive powertrain elements, and numerous other painstakingly created details. Twisted North America plans on building a limited run of 200 hand-built ICE and 30 electric vehicles to start with, originally from Yorkshire, Tom's experience in the luxury automotive market includes managing the build and export of hundreds of high-end custom defenders from the UK. Before joining Twisted Automotive, Tom led business and strategic development, marketing, and new media industries. We'll be back in just a moment to talk more with Tom about these incredible vehicles. But first, a word from our very valued sponsors that make this show possible. I hope you give them a listen and give them a little business because they're the reason we're here today. Sit tight, keep your seatbelt on, we're about to go off-roading in style. Did you know Covercraft offers you much, much more than car covers, floor mats, seat covers, and trunk liners? When you visit Covercraft.com, you'll find Cologne Custom Bras, Labra Front End Covers, and Hood Protectors that protect your vehicle's front end while on a road trip. No more rock chips or hours removing nasty bug jerky from your grill and your paint. You'll find vehicle seatback organizers that keep everything in check, perfect for those kids in the back seat. Spidey Gear Webs that keeps cargo that's in your truck bed safely in place. Seat heaters, cargo bars, pro nets, rooftop carriers, bumper frames, bump steps, pet ramps, pet travel barriers to keep Fido in the back seat, tire covers, Carhartt backpacks, cooler bags, tote bags, tool bags, and zippered tote bags to keep everything secure. And don't forget their dash mat dashboard covers that shield the sun's damaging UV rays. Covercraft offers you an incredible list of solutions for your favorite rides. They're easy to install, easy to remove pet protection pads, are easy to wash too, and protect your floors and seats from Fido's damaging claws and messy fur and air. And here's something special from me here at Cars Yeah. If you use the code ya 120 at checkout at Covercraft.com, they'll give you 10% off on me. Covercraft.com. Go there and use the code Y-E-A-H-120 at checkout for that 10% discount. Covercraft, they've got you covered. American Collectors Insurance, that's who now protects my Porsche Turbo. Yeah, the one I call my orange crush. When it came time to renew my policy, my carrier jacked my rates up, even though I'd been with them for years. I'd never made a claim. No tickets, nothing. What's with that? 
adios. So I started shopping around and kept hearing about American Collectors Insurance from fellow automotive enthusiasts, friends, and folks in the car industry. I did some investigating and learned that American Collectors Insurance have been protecting collector vehicles since 1976. I'm not a price shopper when it comes to insurance. I want to be able to sleep at night. I also want agreed value protection for my special ride. With an agreed valued policy from American Collectors Insurance, I'll be paid what my vehicle's full agreed value is. A number I set with the insurer at the start of the policy so I know there will be no surprises about what my car's value is, should something terrible happen. I shopped around and decided to protect my car with American Collectors Insurance. Give them a call for a quote today at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866 866- 224-9324 and protect the ones you love. Make sure you tell them Mark sent you. You'll be glad you did. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. All right, Tom, we are back. And as we continue on this journey we call your life, I want to start with a success quote or a mantra, some kind of saying that has meaning for you. Maybe it is related to your business. It's a nice way to get those inspirational tires turning here on Cars Yeah. So, Tom, grab the wheel. One of my favorite quotes is, uh, it's not from from our business or or anything like that. It's actually from from your side of the pond, the great Henry Ford. um, And it's one that I come back to a lot, which is, when everything seems to be going against you, remember that the airplane takes off against the wind, not with it. Um, (laughs) Yes. And uh, yeah, one of my favorites, especially, I suppose, in a high pressure kind of environment, um, especially when dealing with uh, these sorts of vehicles and i suppose just in general life right when you've got a challenge my younger brother initially um introduced me to that quote at quite a challenging time of my life and uh for for just a few words that it is it kind of um it really picked me up and uh, it stuck with me ever since you know it's a wonderful quote henry ford is uh, uh coined with having so many great quotes and i love that one in particular and when you think about what we're all going through today with this pandemic and uh, civil unrest and all the craziness that's going on in the world. Yeah, you need to remember that. Then uh, we do have to take off against the wind. Let's dive into your business a little bit. And first and foremost, how are you, your coworkers, and your family doing? Everybody healthy and safe during this pandemic with COVID? Yeah, we're all good. Yeah, um, I mean, here in the UK with the UK business, we took you know all of the appropriate uh, precautions in the same uh, our build facility over in Virginia and the showroom in Austin. Um, mm-hmm. You know, um, the space we've got in Virginia is is really quite kind of large and spread out, so it was easier to manage there. We had very little downtime over here in the UK. Um, it was a little bit more difficult, clearly, just because of our population density and and the space we work. But yes. uh, the most important thing is our staff, because uh, at the end of the day, they're the guys that, that put these machines together. So um, yeah, every, everybody's really good. Thank you. Well, good. I'm I'm really happy to hear that. Let's dive into what you guys are doing because you take the Defender, which is one of those vehicles that over time has become this loved vehicle, and there's a variety of reasons for that of course i know in the u.s here for a long time we couldn't even get them people were sneaking Mm. them in or figuring out ways to get them in and as time went by finally they aged out so that you could start importing them i've had many friends that have owned them they've got this character to them that people love even people that aren't typically off-roaders and and i'm typically more of a sports car guy versus a four-wheel drive guy but every time i look at one of those i smile so take a deep dive into the business twisted and and why you guys started doing this what you're doing and tell my listeners why they need to open their wallet and think about putting one of these in their garage or better yet, out on the road and into the countryside. Mm, Okay. So, I mean, Twisted in the UK and in Europe has been around for 20 years and it's always had this one purpose of of taking the Defender, which is, as you say, such an iconic vehicle and making it just that little bit better better for everyday use and that's really how it started you know defender typically when it was first developed was designed for you know uh, one way backcountry roads here in the uk so it's, it, that's why it's got that kind of slimmer frame and really a utility vehicle which m- made it absolutely great for what it was intended to do but actually as it became more arco- iconic people wanted less of the utilitarian and more of the kind of everyday drivability and mm-hmm. so twisted was born from that need and has kind of grown the brand around around doing that and also doing things very well so doing things for function first rather than form so the brand 
has done you know uh, really well over here in the UK and there's always been a demand as you describe for Defender in the US and so that was the reason that we you know we've looked into the US outside of Twisted I've exported Defender into the US previously so I've had a lot of experience and with this project and this product our kind of vision it was to build a no excuses Defender so something that's precision engineered from the ground up to not have any of the fundamental kind of issues that Defender, even all the way up, dare I say it, to the last of the line 2016 stuff had, mm. iron those flaws out and then make it um, a more drivable, usable luxury vehicle or 4x4 for American for American buyers and drivers. Exactly. And we're seeing this happen across the board when you think about some of the companies, even here in the U.S., for instance, uh, Icon taking Land Rovers or Singer taking Porsches. There's a Bronco company now, um, Land Rover companies that come out of South America. And it seems like, and let me ask you this, are your buyers, do they tend to be a certain age group or are they kind of spread out? Because for me, being an older guy, we're going back to our youth a little bit, but we want those comforts now. We're kind of bodies are getting a little creaky and old and we don't want to fumble along, but we want the reliability and the performance. And you guys do some incredible performance enhancements. Yeah. I mean, so in terms of kind of demographic, typically and previously, I had always focused on retailing this sort of vehicle into, dare I say, a predictable kind of age range and demographic. And that that always floated around, I suppose, people uh, for maybe 40 to 60 um, that had already had some interaction with Defender and already knew what a Defender was and just wanted to own one. With this product, however, actually the pickup has been different and the angle that we're, we're approaching from is, is different. So in fact, the, the, the chap that bought the very first one of these vehicles in our ICE line, the, what we call the NAV8. He's 27. Um, okay. He's in the fashion industry. So it was more for me around, actually, I want to get the product. Um, I want get to get people behind the wheel of the product that haven't actually experienced Defender before and might not even necessarily know what it is and give them this incredible first time experience of what we do in terms of that precision engineered end product. That makes sense to me. I love that you're also building an electric version of this vehicle because that is the future for automotive. It's where so many people are going. How does that change any of the dynamics of the vehicle and how it performs? Because now you've got, you know, this big lump of metal out in front, you got all this weight evenly dispersed, I would guess across the, the floor. Yeah. Changes the dynamics, I would guess, right? It doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, we designed the electric system that we have is is proprietary to us, and we designed it so that it really it retains the driving characteristics of one of our defenders in terms of you know it's it's still a, a comfortable place to be, but it has the functionality of original defender. So you've still got high and low range, you've still got diff lock, you've still got all of those things. It, it it's not a kind of um, we haven't cut it all up and then made something entirely new that has none of the original soul of the vehicle but just looks like one what we've tried to do is retain that original driving feel and the wonder and the personality that you get from defender with those little you know twisted touches that again increase its daily driving drivability but it's electric um, so yeah it's the changes are, are actually fairly subtle but clearly what you benefit is from the idea that you're, you're driving an ev and that your your carbon footprint is lower and, and it's a st- sustainable energy now, when we get into some of the interior details and things, are these vehicles all independently bespoke? So if I come to you, I can start fresh and say, OK, these are all the elements that I want. Or is there a menu to choose from? Or do you go outside of that if my checkbook tends to be a little bigger, a little fatter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the answer is kind of yes to all of those things. It depends on which product line you, you choose from. The ICE, that NAV8 line, every single one of those 200 vehicles is built custom to each client. And so included in our price, we don't nickel and dime um, on any of our products. We include that customization um, for the customer. So mm-hmm. In terms of the exterior paint colors, interior leather finishes, the trims, the, even the stitch color and the stitch pattern, the seating configuration, all of that stuff is included within our base price, all of those choices. Because for me, it's very important that the customer isn't just buy, they're buying a vehicle, but they're also buying the experience of, of having something built around them and their lifestyle. And that kind of goes all the way up into building you know we can do gun racks or cabinets in the back of the vehicle surfboard mounts 
for even things like um, fridges or camping conversions. You know, how nice. does the vehicle fit around the customer and what are they going to use it for? Yeah. The electric vehicle um, that we've just launched, this uh, what we call NAS E, um, North American Spec uh, E, is our reimagining of the original North American Spec Defender. And those 30 are built to a preset specification. So the price point is slightly different, but those kind of come already as we say, kind of beach prepared. So they've got like a spray down interior. They're really a, a fun beach buddy, buggy vehicle, you know, aimed at that kind of specific, whether it be West Coast or Southeast Coast market. Clearly anyone can own one anywhere, but they're a, a more of a fun truck. It sounds like it. How about the, the bodies? Are they metal, aluminum, fiber, carbon fiber? Uh, it's a combination of both. So the bodies that we put on the vehicles are um, brand new OEM. Um, type approved and e-coated um, and it's mainly aluminum um, with some steel bracing oh cool great awesome anything else that i didn't ask you that's really important and special about these vehicles i suppose a lot of it is what makes the vehicle different is around the proprietary technology that we've got um, in the vehicle so things like the twisted progressive suspension system our braking system all of these things that have been developed you know specifically for twisted with leading suppliers manufacturers so Bill Steen and I back for the suspension system Alcon for the braking system everything has been done with a purpose on these trucks mm-hmm. uh, and that all, all the way comes back down to the GM LT1 that we drop in as well you know we're the first people to have fully mapped out and done this engine swap on these products um, it, i think we're on our 28th or 29th iteration now of the uh, of the remap mm-hmm. to get it you know running exactly right with the right throttle response and um, the right driving feel and the right gear ratios so yeah i think that's the most important thing is it's not just kind of a sum of products bolted together it's really been engineered to be something quite special well absolutely i'll encourage my listeners here uh, we'll put links to the website you got to go check these out and if you're not an off-road four by person you will become one uh, I was sitting here looking at your site last night and starting to dream, God, wouldn't it be nice to go off in the country? And, and, and you know, with what's going on in cities around the world and congestion, it'd be great to escape in one of these. And they look like they can go pretty much anywhere you want to take them. So they've got all those characteristics of the beautiful old discoverer that goes anywhere, but it's all in style. It's got power and more importantly, suspension and brakes. Because some of those old ones, you maybe didn't want to go that fast in those things. <laughs> Yeah, it, they just never were designed for highway speed, you know, initially. And so that's what we've done. Clearly, they are more than capable of going off-road when you need them to. Yeah. But actually, how often do you do that versus having a vehicle that you can just drive every day? And, you know, we want to make sure that we can do both of those things. The vehicle does that. You can drive it in comfort. You turn the key when you get up in the morning. It works first time every time. So it's a reliable. It could, it could be your only vehicle as well as your third or fourth vehicle. And we've got a number of customers that do just have their Defender. Now, you mentioned, uh, having facilities here in the US, you have in the UK. I think you also mentioned to me perhaps the Middle East, Dubai. Yes. Yeah, we have um, a facility and, and sales space in, in the Middle East as well. Yeah. Very good. Do you see most of these vehicles, where, where do you see them going if you had to spread out the 200 first vehicles you're building as far as how many are going to what part of the world? Happy to say that for these 200 in the NAV8 line, um, all of them so far have gone to U.S. buyers. Wow. Um, you know, there, there has been interest, you know, outside of um, the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, for, the, for the product. But the, the truth is that we have um, it, the other product that's built in our U.K. facility can be accessed by people in the U.K. too um, and also in the Middle East. So there's kind of this big mix of different um, lines that we do. And so there's a good amount of choice for everybody around the world. The uh, we, we aimed the NAV8 at North America, hence the name. And I'm, I'm thrilled to say that uh, North America has, uh, has, has backed it, you know, and picked up on it. Absolutely. Well, we've got a few people over here, so... That kind of helps just just by numbers, <laughs> sheer numbers alone. I always like to dive uh, a little deeper into my guest's life and talk about a big challenge you may have faced. Now, this could be with the company, could be before. It doesn't really matter. Some kind of big challenge or failure that you faced. But more importantly, what was the lesson learned so that you could come out of that experience in a positive way? So kind of take us on a little trip here, Tom. Um, great question. When I was at university, I, I, uh, I started my own business. And um, it was 
with the help of um, a mentor of mine who, uh, funnily enough, now heads up my EV division really? uh, back here in the UK. Oh, yeah, cool. a, chap, a wonderful chap called Gareth Hamer. But he uh, he backed me and, and I started this small marketing business, uh, which was in Bath in, in the south of England and uh, had some relative success for a couple of years and then kind of got to the end of my degree and realized, actually, I maybe haven't moved as quickly with this business as I might have wanted to. And now I'm in this difficult position where it's not going to pay what I need to, to be able to live. So I can't do it full time. But equally, if I if I go and get another job, I'm probably not going to have enough time to really do this business justice. And so I, I kind of in, in that current iteration of it, it had to kind of fizzle out. I think what I learned from it, though, is the value was not in the business itself, but from the contacts I made through it. And so it was a website design business. And so funnily enough, you know, the, the chap who invested in me originally in that stage, he now heads up our EV division, <laughs> wow. um, a chap yeah, called yeah. Jeremy Green, who I built a website for through that business, now heads up the Middle East division. He's based out in Dubai. Isn't that so funny? Wow. the contacts that I made all those years ago, you know, have come with me. And so whilst that business kind of, you know, it didn't succeed, the relationships that I built around it did and carried on. What an important lesson for everybody out there is, is everyone you meet along the way uh, could be beneficial and appropriate appropriate for future as well. So as we always say, don't burn a bridge. Uh, stay in contact, keep those networks going. And that old saying, it's not what you know, who you know, uh, can help you get along. So I appreciate you sharing that story. We're going to take a short break. We come back. I want to dive a little deeper into your personal passion for vehicles and cars and off-road and twisted. So sit tight, keep the seatbelt on. We'll be right back. Hey, Mark Green here. I want to invite you to an exclusive virtual wine tasting event that I'm hosting on Wednesday, August 26th at 5 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. You've heard me talk about Adobe Road Winery's The Racing Series here on Cars Yeah. For this exclusive event, I have invited some of my fellow automotive enthusiasts and past Cars Yeah guests to join us. Mikhail Haggerty and Wayne Carini will share their love of classic cars. Lynn St. James will be providing insights on racing and you'll learn about the challenges of choosing a best in show from Jeff Love and David Lillywhite, editors of the magnificent Magneto magazine with their virtual online concourse. When you purchase two bottles of the racing series, you'll get a private invitation to this exclusive Zoom event that centers at Adobe Road Winery, where Vintner and endurance racer Kevin Buckler and his winemaker Garrett Martin will share the secrets of their unique racing series wines. Having enjoyed these delicious blends, I promise you're going to love the Racing Series. Here's how you join. Your purchase of two bottles from the Racing Series gets you in the virtual door. Use the code UNICEF, all capitals, U-N-I-C-E-F, at checkout, and you'll get 10% off your purchase of any of the Racing Series wines. Plus, Adobe Road will be giving 10% of this event's sales to UNICEF. As an added bonus, Jeff and David will give everyone joining us a one-year subscription to their Magneto magazine. That's a $72 value. It's like getting an extra bottle of wine for free. Your wine ships promptly and arrives quickly. There's always a seat at the table for excellence with the racing series. So go to adoberoadwines.com, use the code UNICEF today, and join us for a very fast and fun evening, Wednesday, August 26th. Cheers! My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for enthusiasts and collectors. It's your monthly must-read, whether you dream of owning a collector car, maybe you have two, or maybe you've got 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years, and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. And don't miss my weekly podcast with Keith Martin titled Buy, Sell, Hold. It's the essence of collecting. We talk to the movers and shakers in the collector car world. Here's a couple deals I have for you just for listening here on Cars Yeah. If you use the checkout code Cars Yeah, you'll receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription at Sports Car Market. That's an exclusive offer from Cars Yeah. And guess what? Here's another deal. If you'd like to get the actual magazine, use the code BSH for buy, sell, hold. That's code BSH. And you'll get $10 off your annual print subscription. That's right. $10 off. Both of these are exclusive offers here at Cars Yeah for Sports Car Market Magazine. Just go to sportscarmarket.com and get your deals today. 
Let's take a pit stop from the conversation and talk about my charity of choice here at Cars Yeah, America's Automotive Trust. America's Automotive Trust is a group of like-minded nonprofits working together to preserve and promote car culture across the country. Together, they provide scholarships and grants to aspiring technicians and restoration artists. They provide youth education programs and bring communities together through auto-related events, car shows, and drives. One of those nonprofits is very near and dear to my heart because it's right down the road from the Cars Yeah headquarters. It's the LeMay America's Car Museum in Tacoma, Washington. One of the world's truly great automobile collections and one of those must-see bucket list destinations for car people like you and me. If you haven't seen it, I hope you make a trip soon. And if you have seen it, it's probably time to visit again. To learn more about this fantastic museum, go to www.americascarmuseum.org. And while you're there, you can donate to help them keep their engines running. That's www.americascarmuseum.org carmuseum.org All right, we are back, Tom. I'd love to have you tell me about a story that instigated your passion for vehicles, perhaps a pivotal moment in your life and you know that you were perhaps a bit of a car guy. Do you know what? I think there I'm not sure if there was one pivotal moment. It kind of built up over time. Like I said, I never I never actually had much of an interest in the automotive industry. I was more of a kind of creative, Mm -hmm. dare I say it. But as I began to kind of take steps into the automotive industry with some of my first roles, I had an interest and I purchased kind of my first, what I would call a performance vehicle, which was um, a Mercedes AMG. Um, And uh, it was the A-Class, which is the smaller version that I'm not sure if you have in the US. Um, But uh, it was something that I kind of thought about and thought about for, you know, months and months and months and waited for the right one to come up. And then I drove three hours to the, the place that was selling this exact right one and picked it up. I drove the car i think after picking it up later in the evening i think i picked it about 6 p.m but i drove it for about eight hours straight (laughs) after picking it up you know um i didn't speak to anybody literally just did nothing but drive and i think that was the moment where i realized actually i love this i love this feeling i love how this vehicle makes me feel and my interaction with it the freedom that it gives me clearly but also just the emotion that it evokes as I'm driving it. So that was probably one of the the, the pivotal moments, yeah. You had that bonding moment with that vehicle. And you you picked a nice vehicle, of course, the the Mercedes AMG division, which is the hot rod division, kind of like the M Sport division for BMW. Yeah, you made a great choice. But just the fact that you went about it the way you did, you searched for the right car, you got in it, and you just started driving and enjoying so yeah i think you're part of the clan here tom you're part, yeah. you're part of the car guy that was it i was hooked from that moment yeah onwards. yeah absolutely was that your first really special vehicle I would say that was my first special vehicle I would say that it's probably it was my first kind of major entry into proper performance automotive but yeah. my most special vehicle is a car that I still currently got and what's um, that it's a Jaguar F type R Ooh. so it's the V8 and that vehicle I saw for the first time on one of my first trips over to the US I was up at the um, headquarters of Jaguar Land Rover actually in, in Marwa and they had you know 30 of these BF types all kind of sitting around and it's such an iconic shape and and I, and I thought at the time then oh you know, gosh I'd love one of those and then three or four years later after having some success and kind of really working hard and keeping that goal uh, the right one came up and you know I was able to, to buy a, a, an almost brand new one and um, yeah that's probably my first really special proper car shall we say real driver's car and um, I love it I drive it every day um, and I'll never sell it I'll keep that one forever well I think so five liter v8 550 horsepower those cars <laughs> yeah. have if I've got my stats right yeah, uh, rocket ships, and they're oh so beautiful. I mean, they're just everything about them is wonderful. And I think those cars, especially adding that bigger motor, kind of brings back the uh, the love and passion for the early '60s Jaguars. Even if I dare say E types, absolutely the passion for those, which is cool. A bit of almost a supercar in my mind because of the horsepower and all the little elements they put in that car. So nicely yeah. done, Tom. Yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 an interesting car, and I love its versatility. You know, it's still actually got a usable boot space. Um, uh-huh. You know, if you if you if you shut off the flaps to make it quieter and drive it sensibly, it can get reasonable MPG. But it's just timeless, and um, unfortunately, the the noise of the vehicle is by far, in my opinion, the best thing about it. But they, uh, it's a 2016, and in 2017 and 2018, they 
to meet European regulations, they muted them a little, made them a little quieter because sure. from from factory it's it's very loud. Yeah. Um, so that's another reason I'll never sell it because I know I'll, I'll not easily be able to replace that noise that keeps me coming back to it every time. Well, of course, and with the onset of electric cars with no noise, uh, that's the one thing I think Absolutely. purists are going to miss with electric cars. Of course, they're going to get the uh, the upside of that instant on power that electric batteries provide for vehicles, kind of slot car type drive. But yeah, they are very cool vehicle. I love it. Well, here's a bit of an introspective question for you, Tom. I'm going to get in your head. I'm going to be your therapist a little bit today. And I'm going to ask you this. <laughs> if you woke up tomorrow and you were manifest as a vehicle, not what you want to be, but how you perceive yourself into what a vehicle could be or is, what kind of vehicle would Tom be and why? Do you know what? I, this is a really difficult question. And it took me a while to think of oh, um, good. an answer. But I think I've landed on one. And that okay. would be, kind of comes back to uh, uh, Henry, Mr. Henry Ford. Uh, it would be the Ford GT40. Ooh. And I think the reason for that is, at the time, if we think about when that vehicle was kind of um, developed, it was kind of a, a new kid on the block, in, on the scene, in the Le Mans scene, mm -hmm. with, uh, I suppose, a driven and focused goal in mind you know yeah. it was just it was designed to do one thing and there was already some really sturdy uh, and well-established competition in what it was doing and it was kind of a, the young fresh thing on the scene it had a lot to prove but it went and it did it you know out of determination but also i think out of uh, not just the vehicle itself but the team behind it and that's one thing that's really important to me is that yes clearly you know individuals can celebrate success but actually there's very, very rare occasion where that individual is successful purely on their own. And I'm hugely reliant on the people that are around me, whether it's, you know, my family for, for you know, support or whether it's the wonderful team I have. It's all of us. Like like, like uh, 66, it was everybody. It was the driver. It was the guys in the pits. It was everybody, the engineers that designed the vehicle that made the success. It wasn't just the vehicle itself. And uh, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm constantly remembering that myself and reminding it's, just, it's not just me. Um, I get a lot of help too. You put some nice thought into this. I like that. <laughs> it was a hard question. <laughs> well, good. Well, you know, that question came up to me years and years ago from a, a fellow Brit of yours who actually came over to the U.S. and created an art career here. And um, he gave me that idea early on when I started this podcast. And I had a different question that was not nearly so interesting. And the challenge I've had with that question is some people, they don't really listen to the way it's advertise or I've asked it and they they put what they want to be not what they are based on all the details you did so I appreciate that you've really thought that through nicely done what a great car too uh, the Ford GT40 of course with the most recent movie Ford versus Ferrari uh, you got to see a little more history be behind those cars but those of us who are car people of course know a lot of that history and the success and what yeah the teamwork that went into that vehicle uh, to make it so successful. I got to be on the lawn at Pebble Beach during the Concours a few years ago. And the night before the Concours, they had, gosh, I think they had maybe like all 30 or 35 remaining GT40s, original ones sitting there. And one of the people, well, one of the Fords was actually there. And it was just so cool to see all those That's things. Sick. Yeah. I bet it was amazing. I'll send you the, a picture I took of that uh, via Please email. Do, yeah. yeah, you'll love it. All right, Tom, we're entering the last lap. I'm going to fire off a series of questions here and have you give us some quick blips of that GT40 throttle. Oh, so nice. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes in life over the years? Yeah, I would say self-belief and, and resilience. Mm, excellent. How about if I could arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would it be? Coming back to our kind of uh, Le Mans uh, and, and Ford um, kind of thing, uh, uh, Ken Miles, Mr. Ken Miles, I think. Huh. Um, clearly a, a kind of outspoken and interesting Brit, but I just think he would be great to sit down and have a pint with. You know, it's, it's really cool because in the last week I've had two guests now, you being the second that mentioned Ken Miles. And I think Ken Miles was kind of lost in history, unless you're a real history racing buff. Uh, thank goodness the movie brought out a character. Now, I never met Ken Miles, of course, but uh, I wonder how close his personality came to what Christian Bale did. And Christian Bale is one of those actors that seems to really dive deep into his, his uh, the persona of the people he's uh, acting as. Uh, but Ken Miles, to me, just seems like one of those guys that did things his way and didn't give up and just kept fighting and was a great character. So uh, nice choice. That would be pretty special. I'd like to join you for that meal and that drink. <laughs> Share a couple pints. I think he would enjoy that. How Absolutely. about uh, Yeah, how about the best automotive advice someone else has ever offered you? 
<laughs> uh, maybe, maybe not one that you would think I, I would say, but buy, buy rim insurance, buy wheel insurance. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was okay. some of the best advice that I ever got, actually, when I first purchased that AMG. And I thought the salesman was, uh, was having me on. And of course, I'm sure he made a bit of a commission. Yeah. But by God, uh, owning that first kind of luxury vehicle and, and learning how to look after it, that, insu- <laughs> that insurance saved me some good money back in, back in the day, you know, scuffing the rims on, on, uh, on on the side and, and the road and stuff. So yeah, buy rim insurance. I would say that. There best purchase is ever made. nothing worse than the sound of getting oh, too close to a curb. And the minute it happens, you know exactly what you did. Your heart sinks. You feel like you're going to get sick <laughs> and there's no way out of it. It's just yeah, you have to get out of the car and hold your breath and hope that it's not too bad. Yeah. Awful. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. And I, I'm so careful with my vehicles. I remember years ago, one time I, we were downtown. I was trying to figure out where to park. And I finally let the the valet take it. And I was standing there after our meal when he was waiting for the vehicle. And I'm really anxious, like, I don't want this guy driving my car. And I looked down and the curb had actually, part of it had actually kind of broken away and it was sticking out a little bit. I mean, just an inch, you know, and I'm looking at thinking, boy, that's a good way to catch somebody's rim. And guess what happened when he pulled up (laughs) in my vehicle? Oh, I, oh, I still cringe when I hear that sound. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't even know you could get rim insurance. That's I've never even heard of that. So uh, I guess you really can, uh, well yeah. here in the UK. Yeah, they're quite keen to offer to offer it. And uh, do you know what? For the money, especially when you when you you know parting with your hard earned cash on, on yes. a vehicle of kind of higher, higher values, it wasn't that expensive. And by the time you've done a couple of them, I think it's paid for itself. It's paid for know? yeah. Those are rims are very expensive, and uh, even if you fix them, of course, in my case, I just replaced it. I couldn't even stand to think that one was damaged, but it was probably silly. But that's just me. How about a resource out there that you think our listeners would really enjoy? Kind of a go to for you on a regular basis. Do you know what? I would actually say probably Team Twisted. And, and I mean that uh, in the sense that, you know, clearly not everybody, uh, our vehicles are quite specialist. Mm-hmm. Um, so not everybody is, is is going to purchase one. But if you are a Defender fan, if you love Defender, um, even if you've, you, you know, you've got something older or you're just interested in Defender in general, wanting to buy something that, that is uh, more original, our guys will not only, you know, they don't only sell the product that we build, but they really are kind of aficionados. So we get a lot of questions all the time into twisted around you know should i buy this or how does this work or this is broken even if it's a vehicle we've never sold or a customer we've never interacted with we, we we've got a lot of information and a, a great kind of set of minds that that have been building defender since they were knee high and so um that that access is open to anybody any questions at all we can field very cool how do people find that what's the website for that it's just twistedautomotive.com and if you're in the uk you click the uk button and if you're in the us you click the us button that's it don't you guys speak the same language as we do? <laughs> we do. We do. I, well, most of the time, yeah. But products, products and teams are slightly different. You do it much more eloquently, and I think it started over there too, so I didn't want to steal that from you. So uh, I think we took it from you, actually. How about a book? Is there a book you've read, Tom, that you think our listeners would enjoy? The Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah. Which is, uh, uh, I'm sure you've read it, heard of it before. I'm yes. sure it's been brought up before, but a uh, great book and uh, something I read when I was younger and kind of a penny dropped, I think, once finishing it and realizing that whilst, yes, success is partially based on luck, there's also a, a rhythm, there's a, there's a method. And yes. um, yeah, I come back to that book reg- regularly. I love that. A penny drop. You have so many great sayings. Oh, there, touch wood, a penny drop. Yeah. Oh. I like that. Very nice. I haven't heard heard that in a while. Of course, Malcolm Gladwell. So many great books. The Outlier is one of my favorites, actually, uh, from him as well. My son gave me that book. So very cool. I'll remind our listeners, you can find all these very nice resources on Tom Maxwell's show notes page. Just go to carsyad.com, type in Tom Maxwell, and that page will pop up with all these. And again, I encourage you to check out twistedautomotive.com because you're going to spend a little bit of time there. Pour yourself a nice drink and sit back and enjoy the ride because it is very cool. All right, we're up to the checkered flag here, Tom. This can be a bit of a doozy question for you because of the rules I apply. I'm going to buy you any cool, fun collector car. I'm going to exclude your Jaguar because to me, that's a little bit more of a daily driver, something you can enjoy. So you can keep that. I know you said you'd never sell it, so I don't want you to sway away (laughs) from your opportunity here for me to buy you something special. You're welcome. Uh, Here's a couple rules, though. You can't sell it to buy a bunch of other toys with. You pick that expensive Ferrari, you got to drive it. Uh, But I want you to drive it. No garage queens around here. And here's the kicker. It's the only one cool car you can have in your garage. So it's got to tick all the boxes for you and do everything you might like a vehicle to do. So 
what can I buy you today? Without hesitation, uh, McLaren F1. That's of it. Of course. I don't, I don't even yeah. know if it needs much explanation. That <laughs> Not much, um, no. Just, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, something built with one purpose to make the very best, you know, no holds barred, no excuses, no cost cutting, just this is what we're going to do. Um, let's go and do it. And I just think, yeah, such an iconic vehicle. Fans, people love it everywhere. And I don't know how much I would actually drive it. I think I would probably just sit in it or around <laughs> it a lot and just look at it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh wow. Well, what a special vehicle. I was extremely fortunate to get to visit the factory when they started building those because I was importing Facom tools from France. And those first cars came with a set of Facom tools in a special compartment in the side. And going to that facility, it was like going to a surgical room i mean it was just insane and the car was insane and years jump forward years later i was at the pebble beach car week with my son he was probably 12 years old at the time and we were standing in front of the lodge and this guy pulls up in a silver one front of the car and windshield covered in bugs colorado license plates he jumps out and i said you drove this car from colorado and he goes well of course yeah, and my son, my son went nuts and he goes, well, jump in. Don't worry. I mean, this car was used. It wasn't abused, but it was driven. And I just went, yes, that is wow. cool. Yeah. And with how the values have gone up now. Now, this was quite a while ago. I'm not sure anybody would do that anymore because they're multiples of millions of dollars. But oh, so special vehicles. Yeah. What what color would you like yours to be? Just so I get you the right car. Oh gosh, I don't know. That's too hard. It doesn't matter. To no, it literally, it doesn't matter. I don't care what the spec is. I have no preference. Just yeah, anything in front of me. You know, I just think they're just. It's just such an uncompromising vehicle, um, and I love yeah. the vision behind it, and I love the execution. Yeah, you know, maybe I could call that guy I bought so many shirts from that had those old polo ponies on him. He's got a pretty special version of that vehicle. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think absolutely. it's an orange. Yeah, the uh, racing version or road racing version, if you will. So uh, I don't think he's going to part with it. He probably doesn't need any more money so uh maybe i can't get that out of his hands or his garage but oh uh, you picked a nice ride my friend you've taken us on a nice ride today off-road on road uh we've enjoyed learning more about twisted automotive uh, i've been really enjoyed your stories and getting to know you better and i want to thank you for sharing your journey with us today before i let you go though would you share one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you rip off into the english countryside in that mclaren f1 uh, sure, yeah. Something that my uh, old man always kind of used to say to me, which was um, focus on the small goals. Um, so kind of keep your eye on the horizon for the for the, the big targets, but watch where you're stepping to. You know, make sure you look down on your, at your feet um, mm-hmm. frequently because, uh, you know, if you if you misstep, you're never going to get there. Um, the, the kind of the small goals uh, accumulate and that's how I kind of live my life is one goal at a time what are the steps and if we follow the steps we'll get to the end yeah nicely said my friend that's cool kind of reminds me of Mies van der Rohe's God is in the details uh, quote when it comes to design and, and getting things done and again what's the best way for my listeners to follow along with Twisted Automotive so they can go to the website they can follow us on Instagram it's um, twisted underscore North America um, I'm on Instagram as well it's just at underscore Tom Maxwell and uh, yeah just stay in touch just keep an eye on what we're doing and um, hopefully we'll see some of them soon at the pop-up events we've got coming up absolutely when we all can get out of our houses and congregate and enjoy car events again I can't come too soon it can't that's for sure uh, listeners again you can find everything Tom has shared today on his Cars Yeah show notes page very easy to find on the Cars Yeah website I encourage you to check out twistedautomotive.com again you're gonna have fun there and a special shout out to your colleague rob knoll for connecting us and putting us together thank you rob for that tom thanks for being so generous today with your time and expertise and for sharing your experiences with me and the cars yeah listeners until you and i talk again i'll see you down the road no problem take care mate you bet If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting. But what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy-to-read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars Yeah, 
has written that book, and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know, everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt, and it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10, and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah! Yeah!